Night Tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing a, this is a pretty recent request that I got. So it is a request for the application declutter and this was posted in my recycler video. So it was by Scooby Doo 199123 saying instead of recycler, could you please do declutter for Synology, please and thank you. So we're going to be covering that in this video. So before I have another message, so let's get to that. This is something that was in my previous video. So since most of you didn't get to see it, let me repeat that. Thank you for your donations. There was two people that donated to the channel, Adam Lanham and Harish Taluri. So thank you, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. It really helps me to focus on the channel and uh, hopefully we can grow the channel enough where I can dedicate my time to creating videos of good quality for you. So I really appreciate your support. Thank you for your donations. All right, to start, let me highlight something very important from the comment that I got in this request. If you remember when we covered Recycler, Recycler's point was to make sure that you only download things on a specific quality that you want. So the point was make sure to grab only the things that match a very specific quality that I want. But on the case of the clutter, it's different. The clutter should very well work right next to Recycler. Because the point of declutter is it watches the cues of sonar, radar, lidar, radar, and whisper. Radar is for your movies, sonar is for your series and anime, lidar is for your music, readers for your books, and whispers is for your adult content. So it checks what all of these applications have in their queue for downloads. And if it finds, for example, all right, it tried to download a torrent that for some reason doesn't have enough cedars and it's been just stuck in there for three days doing nothing so that's a stalled download it checks for stalled downloads and also for things that maybe you don't even need anymore maybe accidentally the application was already looking for a series and then you manually initiated a search and then manually sent something to the queue so now you have probably two or three copies of the same content that you were downloading and it already determined that you were successful in downloading one of those three so then what it does is okay i've already got this i don't need to have this in the download queue anymore and gets rid of it so basically that's the whole point of this is managing the queue of downloads and making sure that you don't have you know stuff lying there that are not doing anything or that you don't really need so i think this is really good this application is written mainly in python so as you can see Python, and then we just have a little bit of Docker file here. And I like the way that they designed this uh, repository because it's very straightforward, very easy to read, and everything is straight up text right here in front of you. It tells us basically what the overview of the application is. You know, it manages those queues and then removes things that are not, you know, doing any progress or are just duplicates. And it says that it automatically deletes the downloads that are stuck. For example, if it's at the point where it's downloading metadata, like you, you haven't even gotten to the point where trying to start the content. So that's really good because that is something that you see very often. And also says, you know, if there's something that failed, then remove it and then look for another one. And let's say, for example, uh, if you have a download that like for some reason was removed from the queue of the application, but it's still there in the downloader queue, then it gets rid of that because, you know, there's nothing tracking it. It's not going to import it and it's just going to be lying there. It also has another option here that automatically deletes the stalled downloads. So if you see that something has been stalled multiple times in a row, then it's going to, you know, remove it and then look for another one. Another thing is if the downloads is very slow or, you know, it's you've tried it several times and it's slow, then it removes it and then looks for a better source. You have to be a little careful with this one, I would say, because sometimes that's what you have. You don't have many options. But, you know, in the case of new content is highly available. Yeah, it kind of, you know, it's a benefit to do that. You have also the option to automatically delete downloads that belong uh, in there and have been unmonitored. For example, let's say you, you said download a whole series, but then you're like, mm, really, I don't care about season one. So then you unmonitor it, but it's already in the queue. So then that'll get rid of that. So it's not just lying there without being processed. And it also has an option to remove things that failed importing. So there could be many, many reasons. For example, a, a better version was already present and stuff like that. So it covers very good use cases of problems on the queue of these applications. So that's really nice. 
and then it says you can run this manually just running the pi script or using the docker image in our case we're going to be using the docker image and the synology nas through a docker compose file and then here we get information about the dependencies for this application and this is important because for example it says for sonar and radar he recommends that you use the nightly tag instead of the latest because the latest is a version behind and he's basically relying on features that do not work correctly with the older versions so be aware of that in my case i'm just gonna do it with the latest because that's what i have in my nas but it's up to you if you want to go that way or just wait until this kind of gets to that point and then they recommend to use qubit torrent as the torrent downloader and it tells you some reasons why so i'm not just i'm not gonna go over this you can read it yourself and there are other things that you have to pay attention to when running this just come back here if you have any problems and uh, here's the important part how to get started it tells you you know you have two ways you can run the script manually or you can basically do a docker compose we're gonna go with the docker compose version so here's the file that we need to copy to use in our NAS. Let's use this and get our NAS ready and uh, set the things up properly so that we can then use this in here. So let's go first into the Docker folder where I created the projects and the configs. I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder named the Clotar. And that's gonna be the folder for the project. And now I'm gonna go into the configs of all my containers and I'm going to create another one for the clutter and now I have that in there. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the container manager and go into the projects, create and I'm going to name this the clutter. I'm going to pick that path from the docker projects folder and I am going to say that I'm going to create a docker compose file from here. Let's paste all of that in here there are certainly some issues here that we need to figure out though but for now i'm just going to oh it doesn't let me save so all right let's see what the problems are here all right yeah there's some spacing errors here so let me figure those out before we continue all right i have fixed all the spacing problems sometimes they had equals instead of the colon and that is also fixed and there was a double entry for remove slow that i removed and i think now i should be able to at least save so I'm gonna go next, next, but don't start. So now we should get a project and then we can open it in a big view so we can read carefully the contents of that Docker Compose file. All right, we can go into the clutter and then YAML configurations. Let's give it some time today. The lab is a little slow, I don't know why. And here we go. Now we have our services and we only have one service that is the clutter and this is pulling from the not from docker hub but from another registry looks like that's the official one there's no official one in the docker hub so let's leave that as it is we're going to be using that one and the container is going to name the clutter we're going to say restart always and the environment variables i need to change the time zone here because that's not my time zone and then the puid in my case is 1026 which is the default first admin user you create and the group 100 you have to figure that out for yourself if you did something else and then we have some other variables here that we can basically define it, in the general section it says we have test run equals true but it's commented out ssl verification is commented out to false and then the log level info that looks correct to me what about the test run what does what does that mean well, it says that test run allows you to taf safely try out this tool. So you, you can run it, but then it won't do the actions to the actual queues. So that's really good if you're, you know, if you have an active system with all of those applications running and you don't want it to, you know, delete your stuff while you're testing it. You can just put that as, uh, you know, uh, true if you want to just test and not actually do things. But it's commented out. In my case, it's irrelevant because this is a lab and I'm not using it. But that's what it is. SSL verification says that if we set it to true, then it'll make sure that it validates SSL for all of the API calls. I would honestly not use it unless you are explicitly exposing your applications with SSL. Now, it has a bunch of feature definitions here. For example, timer for removal, uh, whether remove failed downloads, whether to remove failed imports, etc. So you specify the specific use cases that you want to apply in your case in my case it doesn't really matter this is a lab but you here would define what kind of actions you wanted to do or not and then here it talks about the scans how frequently it should do the scans for sonar and radar for example that's what it's defined here look go into the documentation and see 
what else you can do there. I mean, it's a lot of things that you can configure here. So I'm not going to cover all of them. Again, feature settings, how many times you can try, and all of that. As of now, I'm not going to touch any of this. This is the important part here that we do have to change. So in this case, you have to specify the URL of your instance. For example, in my case, it's going to be the IP of the NAS. And then for my radar, is 8083. And then I would have to put the radar API in here. And that is something you get by going into radar settings and then you go into the general and then you have the API that you can copy here and then paste here. And then you have to do the same thing for sonar. In my case, it's the same thing, but port 8082. I go into sonar, I go settings, general, copy that API key and dump it in here as the API key that we're going to be using. Same thing for LiDAR, so we pick this up and we change it, but LiDAR in my case is 8083, if I am not mistaken. Let me check. No, 8084. So 8084, sorry. And then we get the API key for LiDAR from here. So settings, general, API key, copy. We go back into the NAS and replace that. Radar is in my case 8086 so let me copy first the api key let's go here and uh lidar no radar sorry and then i'm going to put the ip of the nas but in my case radar is 8086 correct and then if you had whisper which is for adult content it would be basically the same thing here so you would put the address of the NAS and then the, I, the port of the application and then you would put the API key. I don't have it, so I'm just going to put that in there as an example, but I'm not going to use it, so I'm going to comment it out. And then for Qubit Torrent, so that you can actually manage your queue in Qubit Torrent, and you need to enable this. And then you need to put the username and password. In my case, it was Qubit Torrent, Qubit Torrent in the lab. So that is, that is what I'm going to put in here. And then again, the IP of the NAS. And then we're going to put port 8080 to the URL of Qubit turn. So as we can see here, it's not using SAB and ZBD. So it's exclusively for torrents, but that's okay. That's usually where we get those problems. So that looks correct to me. Those are the changes that I'm going to make to this. And then I would just go ahead and save and then build. And we'll, we're going to wait for this to do its thing and come back when that is done. And all right, we got an uh, exit code zero and the container has been started. But here's an important thing that we also have to see here. If we look at the definition of this container, there is no port where we're going to be exposing any user interface. And that makes absolute sense because this is a Python script that is running in the background and we don't have a user interface for it. So basically, if you want to kind of see what's going on, you would have to go into the log and then see you know if there's a problem with this right so we can see for example if we go over this um the application was started uh, it tells you that it checked the settings that we have and then it started checking for things that have may uh, have been marked as needing action and it, it has all the definitions here of what it, sh it should do and then this is basically all configurations. And then it says that the instances that have been configured are radar, sonar, lidar, radar, and qubit turret, which makes sense because that's exactly what I put in here. And then we, we see the appropriate port. And then it says that it's checking the instances and then it was able to connect to radar without problems. But for some reason, there was an error with sonar. I need to check what's going on with sonar. Oh, it says that I need to update to a, ver a version that is for, because I'm currently running the latest, which is one thing that they highlighted, which is version three. So in this case, it fails because I don't have the appropriate version. So this is what you see in that case. And then since I had an instance that had a problem, then it's going to wait a minute and then it's going to exit the container. So in your case, if you had everything that, you know, satisfied the needs here, then it would go ahead and show you more logs of things that it checked and things that it did in case it needed to do something. In my case, we're not going to see that here because I'm not using those instances and one of them is actually not the proper version. But that's how you set it up and it is working. It's just a matter of me not having what it needs. And yeah, no user interface. So if you want to see what the is doing, you have to come to the log and then look at those logs and see what is going on. 
but it works and that's how you set it up and that's what i wanted to cover in this video so if you like it hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so uh, remember that i am not also monetizing the channel so you should not be seeing any ads on my videos and that means i'm not making any money out of these videos only what you donate so feel free to donate using the link in the description below through paypal or if you want through bitcoin that'll be greatly appreciated because then i can focus on the channel maybe get to a point where i can release videos more often and also remember i always look at your comments see what you would like to see and i put that in the queue this is for example one of those a person requested this and i put it in the queue and i created a video for that and in case i can't for some reason get it to work the way you want i'll still comment to you there was a person today that originally the video that i wanted to release was based on something else but after trying and trying i couldn't get it to work and i just uh, messaged that person back saying you know i didn't get it to work the way i prefer but i found this link that allows you that you know, gives you the details how to do it if you want do it that way so always comment in the in the comment section i always read your comments i reply to you as soon as possible and yeah if you if, if you feel that the content was useful share it with other people and that's gonna be all for this one i'll see you on the next one take care